Hey everybody, welcome to Northern Thailand. Listen, today I'm gonna to be starting a new video series of episodes that I'm gonna be sharing with you that are gonna specifically look at a new permaculture design on my property that I'm affectionately referring to as the permaculture circle. Now, if you saw the little video that was advertising my channel when I first came online here on YouTube years ago, you saw these referred to as banana circles. And that's true, they are banana circles and you'll hear them oftentimes called banana circles. But bananas are not the only plant that benefit from this design, which is what I'm gonna be showing you in this series. So let's get digging. Let's go take a look at it together. Come on. The permaculture circle. As the name implies, we're gonna be designing a circle and in its basic form, it's normally about six feet in circumference that we're then going to go exactly three feet straight down. So those are the dimensions of what it is we're gonna be building here. Now, as a permaculturalist and as Alp should be doing, you wanna be able to observe your property for some time so that you can see where it would best be placed, especially on a smaller property like mine. Now, as you can see, I've got this man-made berm over here to the right, which is like on the Eastern portion of my property that then converges and meets with a natural slope, which is coming from the North side of my property. As a result, where these two meet, there's a little gully area here that collects water very, very well. And as you can see that shadow, that's about three o'clock in the afternoon. That spot gets normally about nine hours of sunlight, just depending on the time of year. So X marks the spot. This is where I want to build my permaculture circle. So to get started, all we need is a yardstick. Now for my friends that are in countries where the metric system is used, a meter long stick will work fine for this as well. And basically all we need to do is make sure I have four different areas where the circle is then going to be connected later on with deeper digs. And these are just going to be our measurement divots. We're basically putting these in place so we can get four quadrants of the circle kind of mapped out. And you don't have to go very deep. I mean, right now I'm just trying to make sure that I've got visible lines of where it is I've dug. So I have a rough idea of exactly what it is I'm going to need to connect later. But go ahead and just get these dug out. And again, you know, it just, it, guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure it's circular. I mean, the closer to a circle that you can get, the better the design is going to work. Um, and so get your divots in place. And then once you have that done, you know, go ahead and kind of make sure that you're also keeping in mind that you're going to need about 18 to 24 additional inches beyond the circumference of this circle for the berm that we're going to be making with the dirt that we excavate later on. Now, as you start to dig the dirt out of your circle, one thing I recommend is setting this dirt aside until you get all of the dirt removed from the topsoil down into the pit so it's all exposed. Set it aside either in a wheelbarrow or underneath the tarp, or if you have a little side project like I do here to go ahead and create an unconventional berm to keep water and nutrients from running off your property, that's great. That's also a way that you can utilize this soil and that way you don't have to worry about losing it by being washed out by the elements or rain or something else. I mean, you guys get the idea. We're just simply connecting the circle around our divoted areas that we initially dug out. And this way it's gonna be easier for us to excavate out the rest of the soil that we need to take out and start really getting ready to dig down. But hey, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, Maynard. I mean, look at mine, it looks more like an egg than anything else right now at this point. Now, once you've excavated out the top soil about six inches down and your circle is now more visible, you can actually see the outline very clearly. Uh, the major work on this project is really going to start. You're going to start to excavate the dirt out to build your berm. And I have a little tip to give you in case you have grass and weeds like mine. If you have aggressive grass and weeds like I do on my property, one of the things I definitely recommend is to um, line the perimeter of your circle with some cardboard. Pete's cardboard, Pete's box is the best. Wet it down to do yourself a favor. It's a lot easier to work with when it's wet. Lay it down. I usually go too deep. I'll show you what I mean by that. There we go. This is just going to give the berm an opportunity to get itself established before the weeds start to take it over. And give your plants that you intend to plant here an opportunity to get established first. There we are. 
That's what I mean by too deep. I know that may seem like a lot, but trust me, you're gonna see as we excavate out this dirt, it's uh, there's a lot of dirt in here. one so I mean you guys get it right we're just we're building our berm we're lining the uh, the outline of the circle with our cardboard and we're excavating out our, our dirt and the only reason I'm really even narrating at all in this section is just to make sure that you guys don't wind up with a few of the gotchas that I wound up with the first times I you know I designed these and frankly this is my third go at it and I still made the mistakes um, and really it comes in the way of digging uh, you're going to see in a minute here one thing you see those holes those little potholes that comes from uneven digging when you have heavy clay soil like i do there's a great temptation to want to dig in spots that are really soft but try to avoid that dig in a circle and one other thing that i've got to say is I, and i can't say it enough make sure that you're edging the sides of the circle as you go you don't want sloping coming in towards the circle as you're digging down it, it just is going to be a waste of your time you're gonna to have to go back and re-edge the whole side of the circle it's just a it's a lot of wasted effort so do it as you go it'll save you time in the end but you know look if, if you work a 95 job and you can't do this but anything on the weekends just stay diligent you know set some realistic goals this isn't something that you're gonna be able to probably do in one go especially if you have heavy clay so just you know be realistic mm -hmm. stay diligent keep digging in a circular fashion make sure that you edge to the sides of the circle as you go and I got to tell you, at the end of it, you're going to be really, really happy because eventually what's going to happen is after all this edging and all this digging, you're going to finally reach depth. You're going to hit your three foot mark. And at that point, that's when the fun stuff starts to happen. And by fun stuff, I mean, we're going to start to finally fill this thing up. But as you can see, we're three feet down and the berm looks really good. So we are now ready to go. It's time to get our organics together to fill this thing up with. So when I first saw Bill Mollison and Jeff Lawton design this in a permaculture class that they were doing online many years ago, they would line the bottoms and the sides of the pit with newspaper or cardboard or whatever they had. That's definitely good. You can definitely do that. I typically don't. And the reason why I don't is because I found materials actually break down a lot quicker when they're touching directly to the ground. And because I have more than enough materials to fill the pit up with in a single go here, I'm not worried about weeds and stuff shooting out from the sides and out of the top and just, you know, growing over the, the hole of the pit. So I'm not going to worry about using cardboard, but you definitely can. Now, as I said earlier, also, when you saw me putting down the berm for the pit, I'm using everything from brown cardboard to colored cardboard to even white cardboard for this design. The one thing I wouldn't recommend using is something like this. This is waxy covered at cardboard, All right? This is definitely not something you want in there, but if in the process of putting your stuff together, you get some of this in there, don't worry because the microbes that are gonna populate this pit are gonna be so strong that they'll take that stuff out as well. Now you may have also seen people line the bottoms of their pits with just straight logs of wood. You can do that too. In fact, I did that at my old place uh, with a bunch of cut down mango tree wood that I had. In this particular instance though, the wood that I'm using is really stringy and fibrous. It's basically bamboo palm wood. It's more like a plant. And so because of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a variation of both the palm fronds and some of the cut up plant wood from the bamboo and start the bottom off that way. That way it'll give me some variation down below. Um, that way, you know, more cracks and crevices to be able to work with and have, you know, various parts of the materials that are starting off be at various levels in the pit. Now, once you've gotten some wood and some palm fronds, just some, you know, garden waste started at the bottom, this is a good time if you have food scraps to add them as close to the bottom as possible without actually being on the bottom.
Yeah, don't ask. It helps with the rice to have a good aim. Now, as if all that wasn't disgusting enough, I'm getting ready to go in with something that would make a Billy Goat puke. Five-year-old Dave's fetid swamp water. Oosh. Here's the first bucket. If uh, you're squeamish to uh, really bad smells, you may want to wear a mask. This thing is so old, look at it cracked the lid. Oh yeah, that looks delicious. Here's the second one. Oh, look at that broken bucket lid. Because these things were out in the sun, they were out in the shade, they went through variations in temperature. Oh, that one's even more liquidy. Disgusting. And to put them to good use. Be careful not to get this on you. Hopefully this will discourage any street dogs from coming near the pit. Oh, that is mighty smelly brew. <laughs> Man, bucket up number two is even more liquidy. Wow. That is some nasty smelling stuff. Four years worth of bamboo utensils. Used bamboo utensils. Yeah, I ordered in a lot during the, uh, uh, you know what? I knocked a couple chopsticks down with that broken branch right there. How about some compost? Remember the compost pile I put together back in around April of 2021? Yeah, that's all that's left. Um, I barely harvested from this thing, so let's go ahead and get these materials put in the pit and get them put together with everything else. Just to clarify, that is not dirt, that is compost. Add roughly five gallons of water. Now add your carbons. And now add your palm fronds. And that's it. Water it in some more and you're done. Now this is going to sit and settle for the next month or so. And in the meantime, I am going to get the plant started that we will be planting in this come the next part. And while I won't spoil it and tell you what those plants are going to be, I will tell you this much. It's not going to be bananas. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. If you did, please like and share it with somebody you know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love it if you would. And hit the bell notification icon if you would so that you can be alerted to when I upload new content. Listen, wherever you are in this world today or tonight, you take care. Bye for now.